Okay, everyone, thank you for this latest episode of Idleman Unplugged. I've got a special guest on here, uh, John Cooper with Skillet, and I uh, just want to so appreciate his time. Uh, what happened many years ago is I was looking for an alternative. You know, I grew up with Metallica and uh, what Scorpions, Def Leppard, ACDC, White Snake. You know, it's still up here. Uh, it's hard to get rid of that. And then I came across Skillet and some of that. Uh, that harder music, which I actually enjoy because, you know, if I'm working out, I need something um, pretty intense or running, jogging, or just, you know, when you get into warfare worship too, you know, it's a whole different type of, of style of worship. So anyway, I just want to welcome John Cooper with Skillet. Thank you so much, John, for coming on Idleman Unplugged today. Hey, that's really great. Great to be here. I, I like your list of bands. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> you know, it does lead to the first question. I've, I've got a list of cure questions that people have asked me to ask you and, and I have myself, you know, what are your thoughts on, um, you know, and obviously I don't, I not only look at the lyrics, but the music, but also the fruit and what you've been standing up for during COVID and your boldness and your love of Christ and the gospel, you can tell it's, it's, you're full of the spirit. Uh, and then some people think, well, how, how can you have hard music and, and still, you know, be a Christian. And I remember many years ago I had, uh, it was Cutlass, you know, take me in that song to the holies of holies. I had that introducing my radio program and a lot, some of the conservative churches were like, you, you can't do that. You know, it's, it's got a guitar in it. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a little, that's a little too heavy. And, you know, back to the old hymns and things like that, which I love the old hymns, but the old hymns used to be new hymns when they were first written. Um, but anyway, so from you, from actually the artist who sings, uh, which would be considered heavy, I guess, and, and guitar riffs, and uh, you know, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I can I mean, at some point you do cross the demonic when it's it's just too dark, too. You know, I think of ACDC, Ozzy Osbourne, Crazy Train, and I guess it depends on the lyric and the artist because you can take the same instrument and use it for God's glory, or for very dark and demonic lyrics. So all yours on that one. <laughs> I think we have to start, start. I think I have to start by saying um, that, that, that people who listen to soft music are listening to demonic music. That, that's how I True. view it. <laughs> that's a great point. <laughs> no, yeah. no, just, I'm just joking around. That's supposed to be funny. Yeah. I mean, look for me, I, I think it's always been, it's one of these things that I don't want to always make uh, what do you call it? You want to take like a Bible verse and then make an entire theology based off a verse, you know? So I don't, right. I really don't want to do that for me. I just love loud music. I always loved it since yeah. I was a kid. I mean, I, I just related to it. It probably was playing sports. You know, there's something about the energy of playing a competitive yep. basketball game or, or as you said, running track, you know, or wrestling or getting ready for that football game, whatever it was, mm -hmm. there's something about the energy. And there, and, and I do think there's this element. And again, I, I really don't want to, to use scripture cavalierly, but I, yes. I will throw some scriptures out there that, that I think they mean something to me. And maybe, maybe it's applicable. Maybe it's not, but I think about this scripture, you know, that says um, to the pure, all things are pure. And one of the things that that scripture, as I've understood it to mean, is that sometimes there's going to be something, it may be attached to something that's really negative for someone, but maybe it's not negative for someone else. Maybe that could be that meat that was sacrificed to idols as we, as we see in the scriptures. And somebody's like, right. hey, that's not me anymore. I gave my life to Jesus. I don't want nothing to do with that meat. Then you may have somebody else that, that that's a Christian that's mm -hmm. like, I, I don't even know this was sacrificed to idols. I just thought it was meat, and I was thankful that God gave it to me. I didn't know anything. Music was a little like that for me. I never understood the rebellion, the, the roots of rebellion in rock and roll, sex, drugs, rock and roll. Right, right. I, that didn't mean anything to me. I just liked the way it sounded, man. And I understood God created music. The devil doesn't create stuff. He distorts, right? So the, the right. devil comes in to, to, to steal and, and kill and destroy, of course. But he wants to still steal something that God made 
that was good. And he wants to mess with it and change it yeah. to where he tries to get glory. And I always felt that it was, well, music's just, it glorifies God. So mm -hmm. some of this comes from an, an aspect of, to me, it was, I was pure in it. I didn't know anything about rebellion. I, I never listened to I never got ready for that basketball game. It was like, man, right. I feel like this is making me love the devil. It was just loud music. It was cool. Yeah. So some of it is for that. But but I will say on a, on a deeper level for me, I absolutely believe music belongs to God. There's something of eternity uh, with music. And the Bible doesn't talk about music a lot, but there is something eternal. Mm -hmm. We know that the angels were singing before we were ever created. We know that music is, is singing and worship. We know that's going to be for eternity, right? It's one of the few things right. we have here that in some form is going to exist before the throne for always and always and always mm -hmm. when, when time yeah. is ended, right? So there's something about it that belongs to God. And, and my, my aim is, hey, we're, we're, we're not letting the devil. It's like that old, that great old Christian song. Why should the devil have all the good music? Yeah. Larry yeah. Norman, of course, that's, that's way back in the day, but. We're not going to let the, the the enemy steal something that God created. Right. He may have distorted it, but we're bringing that back under the lordship of Christ, where where mm -hmm. music and art belongs, because everything is the Lord, the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof. Everything in it is His. So that's right. kind of the way that I view it. Yeah, no, I agree. I even I was even thinking of a few things as you're speaking. Number one is there's different styles of worship. And I mean, I'm pretty sure before the, the 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 wall came down around Jericho or David fought Goliath, you know, he was getting pumped up, you know, maybe those war drums or who knows what was going <laughs> on. And there's there's a whole different um, style that depends what you're doing. You know, if you're going into warfare or like you need some energy or you like that high energy music. Also, you're reaching an audience. I don't think people realize you're not going to reach a lot of the kids that are listening to the harder music right now. I don't know if Megadeth is still around or Metallica. Or, but you know, it, it gives them an alternative, and you speak to their life issues, and it deals with depression or addiction, and they can really relate on relate to it. So I think it's it's reaching them where they're at, and I think a lot of people miss that. It's not just guitars are evil; it's whatever you do with it. Uh, yeah, and, and you know, I like tilts the scale. You know, I was thinking today about this as well, just because I was think you know thinking about our yeah. interview, and 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 again, I don't want to use scripture you know loosely, but. We do have to contend with a few things, and you just mentioned one of them. If, if the volume of the music makes it bad or something like yeah. that, we do have to contend with the walls of Jericho. Yeah. We, we do have to contend with this uh, of worshipers being on the front lines of an army. I mean, we weren't there, and I suppose they could have been singing quietly. We don't know, mm, but, I, but I'm, I'm trying to understand why that would be <laughs> why that would be intimidating for an army, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, I, and maybe that's not even the point of why God did that. We don't exactly know. We also have to contend with the fact, um, again, uh, we, with the Mount Sinai, God shows up and oh, God yeah, speaks he and yeah. he's, yeah, he's so loud that, you know, God's people are saying, please, Please make him stop talking. Stop. I don't yeah. want to hear him anymore. I'm afraid we're going to die. We're yeah. going to die because something about the power of God is so loud. It is so we have to contend with David dancing as the Ark of the Covenant is bringing, mm -hmm. um, you know, brought because some of my friends that don't, you know, love uh, this gets into maybe to worship territory or whatnot or, or, or your your specific church or, you know, when, when mm -hmm. the people of God come together. Right. But we do have to continue. Some people are like, well, yeah, we can dance before the Lord, but you don't do that in a congregation setting because that's too disorderly. But we right. have to contend with David dancing in front of everybody. And, and right, I, right. you know, I have a, I have a, a pastor that I follow that I love mm -hmm. that is not into the way that maybe my church would worship because we, we get a little right. cray. Um, but he just said, John, that's different. He said, look, that's the Ark of the Covenant coming back. David is celebrating because the presence of God sure. is back. And I said, hey, I don't I'm not judging, but I don't ever want to get to the point in my life. Mm -hmm. I'm not celebrating my salvation today just as if I just got born again. 
the mercies of God are new every single mm -hmm. day. And I'm more excited about it now than I was when I first believed. So I don't want to get to that point where I'm like, yeah, I used to get loud about that, but yeah. maybe not so much. That's not judgment on anybody else for the way that they want to worship. But those are verses we have to contend with. Mm -hmm. So when I come into playing my music, all of that is kind of in my brain, which is right. we are going into war. Playing music, I believe, is is absolutely spiritual warfare. We don't know a lot about music from the Bible, but we know enough to know that when David played, the demons fleed from King yeah. Saul. We know yeah. enough about a lot of this stuff. So when I get my guitar on, I say, all right, Lord, I don't know what you're going to do. But through the power of the Spirit and the words we're singing, I believe the Holy Spirit's going to mm -hmm. do some work. And I've got a bunch of those kind of crazy stories about what God's done. <laughs> yeah, it, well, you know what, John, you made a great point because I think we forget a lot of times about preference. I mean, have you ever been in a, in an African-American church? They can worship, <laughs> man. And it, it's going to look different than maybe our style or your style and allowing that preference. As long as we love the Lord, fill up the spirit, looking at the fruit. And to me, when I read Psalms, I mean, there's no stronger language than make a joyful shout unto the Lord, timbrel and 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 flute and all on the harp and and all these. I'm pretty sure it wasn't quiet all the time. You know, that was a, that was this this loud instrumentals that they had, and um, and so I think there's scriptural support, but also you look at the fruit, you look at the heart of the worship leader, and um, and there's a time and a place for that. And it's not going. Some people aren't going to relate. They love that. That's why they call it the worship wars. You know, give us, give us the old hymns, just, you know, don't raise your hands, just stay, just stay calm. But then you have other people um, who are ex just excited and they're emo more emotional. I'm more conservative, but there are uh, their emotional uh, elements too. And I actually posted on my, on my Facebook, I think an Instagram feed last week, I was there watching my three-year-old at worship practice and she was dancing all excited. And I, and I was reminded she doesn't care what people are thinking. And like childlike faith, how about childlike worship? They're just, she's just jumping around, loves the Lord. And, and I think as we get older, we're just kind of more worried about what people think. I mean, I've struggled with that. And so I think, I think you're right on the money that there's just different styles of worship and there's, a, there's a lot of liberty there. And if you've, if you've been raised in a denomination that teaches, you know, you can't raise your hands, you can't get emotional. Um, you just, just stay calm. I mean, they're going to, they're going to have a lot of challenges supporting that biblically and historically a revival when re revival, God really revises people. When, when God shows up in a worship service, uh, it's not calm and comfortable. It, the Holy spirit is breaking and molding and shaping, driving people to the altar, crying out to God, demonic opposition, maybe demonic deliverance. And that's a little messy for some people. So anyway, I, I love your music. It, it gets me going. And uh, when I need to get going, I also like that calm, you know, amazing grace. How sweet when I'm more in a, in a posture of just on my face before God. And it just depends, I guess, what we're going through. Um, and right. I also want, wanted to, unless you want to springboard off of that. Uh, oh, and I'm, I will just mention one thing. I mean, yeah. I, I, I like so much what you just said. I, I, I find myself, I think, to be very open open-minded and and I, I consider myself to be fairly non-judgmental about those kinds of things. I have so many great godly friends who don't like to worship the way I worship. And right. I'm always like, Hey, that's totally fine. Like that's so that's great with me. Yeah. And uh, I think that having this sort of, as you said, um, uh, there, there are things we got to agree on and there's some things that we don't have to agree mm -hmm. on, but I do think we should be careful on either side to stifle someone in their heartfelt, true Genuine. worship to God. I think that that yeah. can, but I, uh, you know, it just reminds me of my son. Um, my son is now 17, but it was only a few years ago when we would pray together, my son would, would do this funny, weird routine thing. So he would pray to God and he would always mm -hmm. end it with this way that he would sing something really loud to God, but he would do it kind of like he did it as a kid. So, you know, when they're yeah. kids and they do stuff, yeah, and go, yeah, okay, yeah. They'll, they'll grow out of that, but he never grew out of it. And so eventually I remember telling him at some point, I said, Hey, uh, his name is Xavier. I said, Zave, I think it's time to quit, to, to stop doing that thing. To me, I just thought, is this getting disrespectful to the Lord? And I remember telling my pastor about it. My pastor started laughing at me. He's like, John, you probably, <laughs> you probably just ended God's favorite part. You know that, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, that is and so I, true. And I thought, 
I, I hadn't I hadn't really considered that, you know, we don't want to grow out of the childlike expression of 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 shouting a praise to God. So anyway, I, I like what you said. I think, hey, there's some things we have to agree on. Christ is yeah. death. He rose from the dead. He's alive today. We don't have to agree on what style of music we're singing at church. All right. Come on now. And because some people are emotional, you know, they just like the flags and they're just so, so emotional. I've been delivered <laughs> from crystal myth and alcohol. And there's others, you know, I'm, I'm more conservative and reflective, but sometimes I do like to worship. And um, I know I, there's been times I've been running up on the aqueduct and I, you know, listen to, let's say, one of your songs, the harder ones you know, about addiction or whatever. And I'll just start weeping over that song because of the lyrics and how it emotionally triggers just this deep uh, want to keep fighting for our generation. And so I think, I think it's good and God given as long as those emotions are filtered through the word of God and we don't judge God's word based on our emotions. We actually put our emotions through the word and that's oh, yeah, what you, absolutely. you do for sure. Amen. Um, and on that note too, I was going to mention, um, you know, talk a little bit just about your bold stance. I know you've been quoted what over the last couple of years in different articles about um how worship has become become woke in many areas or worship leaders kind of falling away, challenging the faith. And you decided to, to pr- take a pretty bold stance on that. And I don't know, did, did they reach out to you for, for your thoughts or did you feel a need to, to address it? I'm kind of curious how that, and I don't want to name names necessarily, sure. but um, you know, there was some, uh, some major figures that just kind of, they said they walked away from the faith. They no longer believe. And then you responded to that. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I think that how it started was, uh, I got to be honest, was from my own just frustration, if I can be honest. And and what I mean by that is that in my own naivety, <laughs> 15 years ago, I, did, I, I, I didn't know it was a possibility to say that you were a follower of Jesus, but mm-hmm. to not live like a follower of Jesus, to not believe right. his word. So I didn't know that was like uh, maybe a thing. I just kind of it was this assumption. Now that's naive on my part, but that's what it was. And so around 2012, I'd say 11, 12, 13, that's when I began first noticing things. And some of the things I was noticing would be from people like Rob Bell. It would be that, that kind of group. What, what was that? The church? Emergent Church. Emergent, emergent Church. church yes. Yeah. Very, da- very dangerous. We can name names on that, I think, because. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, all those guys, Brian, it, Brian McLaren, Tony Jones, Rob Bell, just, yeah. So, yes. And at the time, you know, I didn't, I didn't know who these people were. I was just seeing the quotes pop oh, up. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, what, 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 what is this? And I was seeing it most frustratingly. Um, uh, I wouldn't say frustrating yet. I would say confusingly from people that I knew that I know were Christians mm-hmm. that I know love God. And so right. I'm looking at it going, wait a minute, you know, my friend, let's call him Joe. My friend Joe is putting this on his Facebook page, but I know Joe and I know that he doesn't believe whoever this raw bell person is, is saying this. I know he doesn't believe that. Maybe he doesn't understand what he's posting. It was starting right. like there's this confusion. And so I began looking into stuff around 2012 and 13 is right when the first of the, what, what I would call kind of social justice, uh, woke type stuff started. All right. We had things like Ferguson and we began to have the beginning of some of the, the social justice activism that began permeated it in, into the church. And I didn't recognize that either. I just saw some of the things being said that didn't really sound right to me. That right. turned into frustration about God, what is happening And I remember telling my pastor in 2014, I had begun studying. I was reading a ton of books. Mm -hmm. And I said to my pastor, I said, hey, I got to be honest with you. This is the first time in my life since I've been a Christian since I was a kid. I got really serious with the Lord in college. I love the Bible. I read the Bible. I'm no theologian, but I love the Bible. And Mm -hmm. this is the first time in my life with God that I do not know how to live for God. Because every time I open up social media or Facebook or I hear a preacher they're saying so much that I that I that, yeah. that disagree with, but I don't understand what to do. So one pastor says, if you want to live for Jesus, you have to do A. The other guy says, the other pastor mm-hmm. says, do not do A, you have to do B. Mm-hmm. I don't know what to do. And so I began this deep dive. And basically what I came out on the other side of that deep dive around 2016, I bet I read about 200 books. I was studying yeah. like crazy. I came to the conclusion 
and abs- actually, you you have a sign right behind you that basically would have saved me about two hundred books. Absolute truth in a relative world. That that's yeah. precisely. I came to the conclusion. Oh, we live in yep. a time of postmodernism. I didn't know that. I didn't know that the, any Christian could ever bring postmodernism into the faith. Th- those are two things that do not go good together. So, around two thousand nineteen is when I finally had had enough. And I just said, Lord, I know you want me to speak. Don't know what you want me to say. Mm -hmm. And there were people that were falling away from the faith. They were making these big, you know, you had Joshua Harris, um, Marty Sampson, who was a worship leader. So that was more like, like my world, if you will, my music world. We had another guy from caveman's call. Yeah, um, I remember that one. And I can't remember his name all of a sudden. He felt all these people fell away, not quietly, they mm-hmm. fell away loudly and they aimed to put out to the world, yep. I'm leaving the faith, done with Jesus. It's not real. Science is real. Science has disproven God. The church is bad. The church burns people. The church is a terrible testimony in the world. If God was really nice, he never would have killed his own mm-hmm. son, Jesus. And if Jesus was nice, he wouldn't judge people and send them to hell. All this right. stuff was coming out and I just had enough. And I just said, hey, What's happening in Christianity? This is not this is not the Christianity that I grew up in. I believe that the Bible is the word of God. And if you build your life upon the unshakable foundation of the word of God, mm-hmm. th- then you're, you're going to lead to life. And if you yeah. don't, it's going to lead to death. And, and look around us in 2022, 20, just death everywhere. Wow. We are on a unbelievable. It's like it's like we're on a it's like we're on a, a race to see how much death we can have as yeah. quickly as possible. And you and I know that because we, we, we've we mm-hmm. read Romans 1. So we understand what's happening and we got to get that truth out to the world. So it looks like me wow. and you are, are passionate about a lot of the same things. Yeah, and and I got to tell you, um, we didn't know each other really before this. Um, a friend of ours, mutual friend of ours put us in contact. But man, I was sharing your articles. I'm like, praise the Lord, because you don't hear a lot of worship leaders coming out and saying much because, or pastors really for that matter, because I think, especially when you get more well-known because Nichols noses, marketing demographics, I don't want to lose that audience. And then when you, when you ask, I hope I don't offend anybody, you really offend God because uh, God wants us to speak his truth and the spirit of love and humility, the boldness of the Holy spirit. And that's how revival is going to come. That's how lives are changed to tell someone, you know, that's not right. And here's why. And I'm sure you caught, caught a lot of heat for that. And I, you know, I do as well, but uh, you know, that, that here's the thing, everyone else is competing for air. We need to compete for the truth. Voices, voices matter. Leadership matters. And we've got all, can you believe that we are having a conversation that men can have babies? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't even have words to describe this. And yet if I say anything, I'm, I'm, I'm labeled this. Uh, if I say, hey, you know, CRT, a lot of dangerous c- critical race theory. Now I'm a racist. Hey, you know what? I love what God has done in America. Now I'm a Christian nationalist. It's, it's like, it's, <laughs> so they just, they, what they're trying to do is silence you. You can't argue. You can't debate with truth. So they'll just shame you into silence, label you. And that's their only m- modus operandus right now. That's their only way they can handle this. And I think just more Christians you have to have the love of the Holy Spirit, because if not, if you just have arrogance, you're going to miss the love and the humility. You've got to have the boldness of the Holy Spirit married with humility and brokenness. And then that that's how God God unloads that, that gun. I remember Calvin Miller said, God loads the gun of the Spirit in the silent place of prayer. And it really, that time with God, that's where this boldness needs to come from. So again, just I, I so appreciate you on that. Um, and just to give you kind of a perspective on even back to the emotional worship question, I've got uh, John MacArthur to my south and Bethel to my north. <laughs> so right, <laughs> right, right in the middle of that, that, uh, that, uh, you know, that, that war there that's go, that goes on. Um, also, one of the questions that uh, somebody wanted me to ask you, I don't know if they're a worship leader, but how do you maintain like a walk of integrity and faith in Christ, especially in the midst of popularity or traveling? Um, how, how do you, how do you keep that balance? Cause so many people are swayed away as they get, you know, more popular or busier and, and just really holding that, that anchor mm. of integrity and that relationship with Christ. 
Yeah, you know, I think there's a there's a lot of answers to this question, but I will say, I mean, one of the the I would say a cornerstone answer really is that in Christian music, um, well, from in mainstream music for that point, if if you're a Christian playing mainstream music, uh, most musicians don't have a church; they, they don't sure. go to a church, and uh, yeah. even a lot of worship leaders that are, that are a part of church, they're, they're, they they work out of the church, but they are. Nobody ever really tells them no. You, you know what yeah, I mean? No accountability. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's it's almost kind of like we, it, the this. I, I hate to say it, but it's almost like uh, the system is created to create uh, famous people or, or celebrities yeah. or something like that, as opposed to we are the people of God, and there is uh you know there's a there is an authority structure. We, mm-hmm. but we, you know, we are living stones set side by side, if you will. We're we're in this together, and I, yeah. and I need to be under submission to church leadership and this that, and the other. I have a church that I go to that I've been a, a part of um, ever since we started, and my church mm-hmm. leaders view Skillet as underneath a, their covering. Yeah, yeah. as a, a little yeah. bit like they're sending us out to do right mission work, if you will. But we are not a ministry of the church, but we are under their covering, as you just said. Right. That's actually the best way to say it. So for me, I, I've always understood that this is not just skillet going out to do our own thing to change the world. We're a part mm-hmm. of something that that matters, and because of that, then there is also a structure within skillet, you know. And and we are together. And of course, my wife is in the band, so it's nice because we have. Yeah, that helps. Yeah, we we are yeah. very much a family, kind of literally. Uh, but also with the band members, my band members are awesome. I mean, my band members love the Lord. They are disciples of Christ. They are very mm. passionate about the Word, and so we see ourselves on a mission. And I think that all of that really it just plays into everything. Otherwise, you get on your own, and you just kind of yeah. you start believing your own press. And and For being sure. on the road yeah. is is not real. It's not realistic. People screaming your name, but yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't know you. They don't know that right before the show you were a complete jerk to your wife. Mm-hmm. You know, you mm-hmm. treated your wife nothing like Christ treats the church before right. the show. And you treated your kids bad, or you or you think mm-hmm. I'm above uh, uh yeah. changing a dirty diaper uh that's that somebody else will do that you're not looking to serve as you ought and so anyway all that really plays a huge a huge huge role inside of what skillet does and staying humble staying broken staying teachable those are all absolutely key, you know because with, you're right without accountability any of us would go hey i mean a little bit in the wrong direction because we're we, we're believing our own press we're my decisions are right and there's no iron sharpening iron. And I think I've just been in the back of a lot of green rooms, you know, at at big events or even worship events. And it's just, it's sad. You know, I want the room temperature at a certain degree. I want my water. I want my freshly squeezed juice. It's like, Oh Lord, help us. We wonder why we're not experiencing (laughs) revival. You know, the celebrity (laughs) status is, is not, not real healthy. And uh, this next question, and if, if you don't want to, if you can't really talk about this too much, I, I completely understand, but I've been wanting to get your thoughts on it. And uh, um, about an hour and a half nor- uh, west of me is a town called Bakersfield. And uh, that's where, you know, Brian Head Welsh came from with Corn, and I know his pastor yeah. there. And it can just confuse a lot of us when he went back into Corn. And if I listen to some of that music, it's, I mean, wow. So, I mean, again, I don't want to judge. I don't know, but how is it? Is it hard to go back into that lifestyle? Is it even possible sing those lyrics? Um, and then, you know, I don't know the dynamics that we're working there. And again, I want to be careful and sensitive, but it seems like that would be pretty challenging. Um, yeah, I know what you, you know. mean. I, I yeah. do know what you mean. Um, let's see. Uh, that is an interesting question. I've never been asked that before, and I and I definitely want to be very uh, sensitive because Brian's a friend of mine. Um, yeah. I don't, but I don't think he would mind me saying this. I mean, it's complimentary, right. so I'm assuming he would not. But I've been on tour with Corn um, yeah. just a few years ago, and even though me and Brian are not what I would call you know great friends, we're not right. like best mates. You know, we text each other every now and again, but Brian is a serious follower of Jesus. And I know, yeah, I know him personally enough to know that. And, and so I don't think that he would mind me saying this. I have asked myself the same question, you know, um, like, wow, I wonder how he does this because it, it is a dark world. He doesn't have 
uh, the benefit of what I just said about myself. Right, absolutely. I, I'm with people that are like, dude, we're in this together for the kingdom. And he doesn't, he doesn't have that. So, and, and that's not judgmental. That's just a fact. Right. right so right. I have wondered how he is able to do is actually a really good question, but, yeah. but, uh, but I would just in, in the answer with what I know for a fact is that Brian, from what I have seen with my eyes lives yeah. the life is passionate about Jesus. And he, he talks to people about Jesus all the time. All the time. Yeah. So yeah, he yeah. is absolutely a light in a dark world in a very dark world. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, I don't think he would mind me saying, because all that is super complimentary, but yeah, the, yeah, one, yeah. the one thing I would say is I couldn't do what he does. And, and I don't mean right. that I couldn't handle it. I wouldn't, that's just not what I would be called to do. But right, that is yeah. in no way um, saying that he, that he shouldn't do it. So, um, again, yeah, I think that and I, I think, think that that that's complimentary. That's, yeah, that's where I've been, too. It's like, you know, I know Brian loves the Lord and maybe God calls us to different things. I mean, but then I listen to the corn videos. I'm like, this is so demonic. My mind wants to go back to my old party days. You know, it's a, <laughs> but maybe, you know, again, he's he's here's what I liken it to. A, a pastor friend of mine um, goes to porn conventions and ministers. I'm like, uh, that's not for me. I don't need to go to a porn convention, and hand out Bibles. You know, I, I don't know if it's wise for, but that's God's got him in a powerful him and his wife. And so I think sometimes we just don't, you know, we gotta be, we can't be wrongly judgmental um, and just let God deal with them in their hearts. I was just, I was just kind of always wondering that like, boy, that would be, that would be challenging. But if you're praying with people, you're ministering to the, the, the guys there and you can really keep that walk straight. You know, that's between him and the Lord. So, yeah, it's one. Uh, of, it's definitely one of those things that that I've watched. And I've, I've seen Brian share the gospel with people after a show. Go out to the audience, and he grabs people and they bring them together. And he there would be 15, 30, 40 people, and he just says, "Hey, I want to say thanks for coming. I want to tell you about." why my life changed. I used to be addicted to drugs and this, and he, yeah. he his whole list of his rap sheet, if you will, his rap yeah. sheet of, of before Christ. And he said, and Jesus changed my life. And it's, it's a yeah, miracle. So, you know, I do watch it and I say, okay, Lord, I, I see this is just as mm-hmm. something that not everybody's going to understand, uh, but, but I do thank God that, that, that he's so uh, serious about his faith for sure. Yeah, true. And w- for example, if you, did you catch any heat? If you would play with corn where in your mind, you're probably thinking you want to bring the light into the darkest area possible, but right. I don't know if you caught any heat for that as well. You know, I've done things that people sure. don't understand, you know, would, yeah. that, would that be your, that would be your thinking behind it probably. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, uh, we have caught heat for stuff. The truth is I've never really listened to it. Uh, I, I never paid attention to it. I mean, I was raised in a very, um, I probably should say at, at the top of the show, but a very more like John MacArthur uh, yeah, type yeah. church, as you, as you said. And so a uh, rock and roll was evil. Rock and roll was from the devil. Christian rock and roll is the only thing that was more evil than rock and roll. Right. For sure. <laughs> and, yeah. and so I, I have, I have a real love for people like that. Cause I kind of understand where they're come from. You know, my parents were like that. And so I go, yeah, I understand that you might think it's demonic. And, and I would just say, Hey, grace to you. Uh, no pun intended grace to you. You go do your, you do your thing and I'm going to do what God's called me to do. But for me, I love going into the darkest of the dark places right. to play my music um, I too would not feel comfortable at a porn convention, as you just said, yeah, but in yeah. terms of a concert, yeah, I want to go in and play my music. Cause I'm absolutely convinced as you are, it sounds like I am absolutely convinced that he that is in me is greater than he that's in the world. Mm-hmm. So if the devil has tried to steal music and twist it, and they're going to do all sorts of dark demonic music, I'm absolutely convinced that the Holy Spirit's power and my music can is way, way more powerful than this. I mean, you will right. receive power when the Holy That's Spirit true. comes behind, yeah. uh, comes upon you. So come on, let, let, let's and do you, it. I, I feel like it, Elijah. Or, you know, yeah. yeah, you go and call down fire all you want to. What's your God? Is he peeing? Is your God taking a nap? Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And now it's our turn and let's let the Holy spirit do something. Pow- I, oh, I feel like preaching up in here now. Shane. I know we're, we're, I'm open to it. Let it go. 
<laughs> uh, I do have a question on that too, though, but there is, uh, I'm sure, a line that you wouldn't cross. Like if, hey, if I've got a compromise in this area, if our, if our promotional material is going to have nude women on it, I mean, there, there's a line you have to be delicate with in, in crossing you know, over a little bit and, and ha- making sure. sure you're integrity. And I remember I was trying to get Francis Chan on a few months ago when he, uh, when he spoke at a conference in Florida, some of my friends were at, and I guess shared the stage with some questionable people. <laughs> He's like, I don't know. I'm speaking to 85,000 people. What, I mean, I'm like, I don't blame him. You know, there's a lot, you know, you want to be careful guilt by association. I got it. But this, at, at the end of the day, how do you bring the light into some challenging areas? If you don't go into challenging areas, I mean, unless we can just avoid everything and live in our own bubble, you know, is, is, is obviously not the answer either. So anyway, good job on mm. that. Um, and maybe, maybe Brian will come on sometime. I'd love to hear his heart on that. Oh, I'm sure he'd love to. Music. Yeah. And I think finally what we're seeing, um, because I, I guess your music would be considered emotional worship to some degree, obviously harder emotional. I, I love it for one. I know many people of our church do too, but what, what, what do you see going on too with in the worship circles with, I don't even know how to, how to, the right words, just some, some kind of weird stuff, you know, maybe in, in some of the, the uh, <laughs> some weird with, stuff. <laughs> well, yeah. Without naming names, you know, just, just, you know, you see, uh, hearts of people and you see certain churches and, and just, there's just seems to be this, if we play, uh, for example, you know, catching heat, let's say we play some songs from Kim Walker Smith, even though I had Kim Walker on the podcast, answered all the questions. Great. Sean Foyt, you know, same thing. And so their character is great. They love the Lord. But if you're identified with some of that music, you know, it's too emotional, uh, too, yeah, you know, okay. so I don't know if you've, you've seen any of that from your perspective or what that I know like. what you mean. That's interesting. Um, and I, I would like to say one other thing going back to other things, because, because you just said something, I just want people listening to know that I do agree with you. You mentioned something about there are lines that we don't want right. to cross just so we can be somewhere. And I was, I was trying to kind of like, um, allude to that when I said yeah. I wouldn't go play at a, at a, uh, at a porn uh, yeah, yeah, convention, convention or whatever. There yeah. have, there have been things just so people know, I won't mention the band, by name, but there have been things that I have agreed to. And then when there was promotional material or something that came up, as you mentioned, when I said, Hey, I, I, I need out of this, this is not because now my name is on it and it looks like I'm endorsing something exactly. else. So if, if, as long as there's a, Hey, can I play, can I play my music as I want to play it? And it doesn't look like I'm endorsing what you're mm-hmm. saying. Um, I do think it's a fine line to cross. I'm not saying I've, um, I'm sorry, I didn't say to cross, I meant to cross, to not cross. To I'm not, not saying cross, I've, yeah. I've always done it perfectly, but those things are on the table. And I guess I would just mention finally, this is where it comes back into me with my church leadership and right. not just with my church leadership. I have other people in my life, um, as you mentioned, um, our mutual friend, Michael Brown, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and even on lots of theological perspectives, uh, my friend, um, James White, who is more of a reformed theologian, Calvinist, a, yeah, yeah, Calvinist yeah. a very good friend smart of mine. Guy. Smart guy. Oh, very smart. Yeah. Um, Daryl Harrison and Virgil Walker from, uh, the just thinking podcast. So I have a lot of different people. And if I realize, Hey, this is more in their lane. I, I want to get their opinion. Am mm-hmm. I saying this right? Do I need to step back from this? And they've said all those people have helped save me from a lot of grief, just so you know. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want to mention that getting into the, the next thing I have noticed there's a huge amount of drama with all of the worship stuff, the emotional music stuff. Mm-hmm. And I think I want to say from the, maybe from the get go, this is not one of my areas of expertise, even though you might seem like I should be because I'm a musician. The things that I, um, you know, I run a podcast called Cooper Stuff Podcast. If people want to watch that, the yeah, things let's, that let's encourage them to subscribe to that. Absolutely, subscribe to it. Cooper Stuff. The things that I feel passionate about are going to be more along the lines of cultural apologetics, mm-hmm. um, uh, the Word of God being authoritative, the Word of God um, not just being authoritative but applicable to the world, uh, politics, the civil realm. Yep critical theory, Marxism, um, all the, all these kind of things. That's the stuff that I feel like I kind of, I'm ready to throw down over. You'd think it would be the music thing. I've, to me, a lot of the music discussion, this is going to make maybe people mad on all sides of the aisle. I've always found it to be a little bit petty. I don't it quite is. understand yep. what people are so mad yep. about the well, idea. 
Well, the I, uh, for instance, I can sing. I can sing a hymn. Uh, just uh, just as I am, victory in Jesus. The the Southern Baptist hymns I grew up with. I feel quite emotional about those songs. They make me emotional about my faith in God. I can't believe He saved me. I can't believe He chose me. It doesn't make any sense to me. He's giving me everything that I could never earn, and I get emotional singing those songs just like I get emotional singing Shout to the Lord by Darlene Check or whoever. Um, If the words are biblically accurate, I want to sing them whether they make me emotional or not. But if they're biblically accurate, they usually make me emotional because God's the God of my emotions. I don't quite understand all the fighting, but I do understand it is the case that a lot of worship music has become so uh, ubiquitous and so, I would say, commercialized that that it no longer shares truth of the word of God. It, it, it's emotionalism. I, I get that. Uh, I get that there's a an aspect of it that you're trying to write a song that can appeal mm-hmm. to so many people that you don't want to say something maybe that's blatantly true or maybe right. you, you temper it. And I can yeah. see that. And I've called out some of these artists by name by name before. I've not been trying to be rude, but I'm saying, hey, you know, we shouldn't be singing songs that are not true. So I don't quite get all of it, but do I think that there are some things to be concerned about? Yes, I do. But I don't like the idea of just blasting an entire genre <laughs> just because there's some mm-hmm. songs that we say, maybe those aren't the most biblically accurate right. songs. Well, know. you know why I think you feel this way too, John, is because you're focusing on your podcast too and everything else on the essentials. And if we agree on the essentials, why are we over here bickering about the the things that are non-essential and maybe um, maybe um, maybe emotional because it registers in your heart differently than someone else and so i think um not to not to get off on this topic but what i've also noticed is a lot of times those who had a, have have had a deep profound work of the holy spirit in their life are more apt to be emotional and like that heartfelt worship you know holy spirit you're welcome here and this it's just just digging deep you, you the, the deeper life, Tozer, Lena Ravenhill, fasting and praying all night worship nights. You know, you usually don't see that in the more conservative churches. You know, those who are against mm. emotional worship, you're not going to see them fasting. You're not going to see them opening the altar. You're not going to see prayer meetings all night. You're not going to see worship for two hours. You know, they, they avoid all of those. To me, it seems like all of those emotional things when it could be a lot of them have never been revived emotionally inside with this deeper mm. walk with the Lord. So that's, uh, that's an interesting, two cents on, yeah, no, that's an interesting point. I mean, my, my biggest influence in my life, the book that I read that changed it all for me was Tozer. And, you know, yeah. you, when you read pursuit Tozer, of God or, pursuit yeah. of God, yeah, yeah, you're, you're reading about God, but you're, but you're, you're reading somebody that's very, deep. I mean, a uh, very deep, very deep yeah. theologically, but, but, there was just truth about God that was so life shattering to me. Yeah. But I do think for me, I do think I walk in a lot of different circles, probably yeah, the fact yeah. that I, I am kind of deeply reformed, but I'm also charismatic, you know, and, yeah. and I always tell people about it. Some people can't wrap their minds around it. But I think that for me, what it is, is, is I love the, the, the deep, um, I would say theology uh, of Calvin and Jonathan Edwards and people like that. But I will say, this is my opinion, again, making some people mad on each, on every side of the aisle, maybe. It's okay. I do it every podcast. Every, this is your <laughs> thing. It sounds like, yeah, but I, yeah. you know, I will say that, that the people that love those people I just mentioned who I love, it, it's almost like they only have room to create disciples who have brains to understand academic things right. and not everybody has a brain to understand academic things. And so all of a sudden the gospel comes, um, it, it becomes very narrow. And if you really want to follow God, then you have to have an academic brain. And I don't think that that's, that's accurate. And so when you look at Jonathan Edwards, you actually have somebody even though a lot of the reform people don't really like to talk about this aspect of Jonathan Edwards, Edwards, with Jonathan Edwards, you have 
one of the most brilliant theologians of all time, certainly in American history, the number one, most people, a lot of people would say, but you also have Jonathan Edwards, the guy that would go into a field for hours at a time in silence and get caught up in what he called trances and the Holy spirit, whatever exactly that word means. Mm -hmm. I assume it just means deep longing, right? Uh, uh, affectionate feelings about his maker and about the goodness of God. Nobody is going to challenge Jonathan Edwards preaching or his, his theological right. chops. So I, I just kind of think, Hey, I think it's great to have a gospel as long as it's rooted in truth where we're, where we're making it as big as we can for people with academic brains. And then people that say, I don't really understand all the academics. What I know for sure, Jesus saved me and I never deserved it. He changed my life in an instant, like my friend Brian Welch. He changed my life in an instant. And he's the only thing that got me off my drugs and my alcohol or my addiction, whatever that addiction is. I never thought it was possible. And I'll say this. Because I'm on a, I'm uh, now I'm on a tear. Um, I'll say this too, because you mentioned it earlier. I meet a lot of people in my life because of playing music. If we go and play places, if there's volunteer help, a lot of the times that volunteer help will always be people that were are in. Um, what do you call it? The, uh, recovery, those, homes. Recovery, recovery homes. Recovery. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Halfway Every homes. Every yeah. one of those people that I've talked to believes in a manifestation of the power of God. Not a single one, of, not a single one of them has said, I don't get emotional about God because it's all about up here. Not one of them has. And I wonder if there's something about the power of God that set them free. That is so real to them that, that uh, how can you deny that? Uh, how can you deny wow. that? That I find that kind of baffling. Well, it's, it's, I think it also has to do with those who have been forgiven much, love much. And the, the deeper the pain, the greater that relationship sometimes before God uses a man greatly, he has to hurt him deeply, Tozer said. And so I think a lot of the intellectual people are straight as a gun barrel theologically, but just as empty. They're missing that power, the anointing, the unction, the brokenness of the spirit that fills them completely with the spirit of God, with love and joy and peace. And, and I don't think that's any secret why Jonathan Edward preached monotone hit centers in the hands of an angry God and, and prompted the first great awakening there with Whitfield and Wesley because of that time spent with the Lord. You could read Wesley's journals, Whitfield's journals. David Brainerd was a native uh, emissary to the Native Americans that John Ed- Jonathan Edwards knew. And these men would do sometimes all night praying and fasting, supplication with the Lord. And they would say, the Lord visit me at three in the morning. The presence of God was so thick, so tangible. And so I do believe you can experience God. And that's what many people are missing. Because you want to put them in a box up here. I've got my five points, my irresistible grace, total depravity, unconditional election. And I've got my five points. And that's how I understand God. But they've never experienced him in their heart. And you got to have both the, both the truth and the working of the spirit. So true. Mm. So wow, true. That's, uh, that's powerful. I love that explanation. And I, and I will say this for my friends who are worship leaders, pastors, or anybody watching that, that yeah. whatever, that does play whatever they call it, emotional music, whatever they want to call it. I do think we would do ourselves some favors. <laughs> we would do ourselves, we would earn ourselves a lot of goodwill with a lot of mm-hmm. great other brothers and sisters that don't understand us right. if we would begin to study the word and not yep, just absolutely. be emotionally based. Because the truth absolutely. is, since I just went off on you know one a second ago, the truth is we don't, we as a as a group of people. We don't do that enough because the reason is, is we discount it because we go, well, we don't really need that because I've already, I've already had the spirit. I I, I, I need more of the spirit. I don't need more of that. And and, and that is absolutely not true. It is absolutely incorrect. And I do think if I could be frank, I do think that's a reason that we see a lot of worship leaders falling away. They wrote all these great worship songs. How can they, how can they fall away from the faith? They were not deeply rooted. They liked the way the Holy spirit made them feel. Maybe, maybe it was just the music. I don't know. I don't know what it was. It was emotional. They liked parts of it, but they did not love Jesus for who Jesus actually is. Because if you love Jesus for who he is, then you are not going to condemn him because he's going to be the judge of the earth. Jesus is the one that comes back to earth 
riding a white horse to wage war and bring justice and judgment to the earth. That's the Jesus that you worship. And if you condemn him for that, then you never really love Jesus. So worship leaders, people, if you're on that side, do yourselves a favor, root yourself firmly, ha- have, I would say, have more respect for these great Bible teachers who might even yeah. judge you for the music you make. Yeah. Say, that's okay. What can I learn from them today? Yeah, no, John, that you hit the nail on the head. I think that's why you have a great balance and why you're successful in both areas, the emotional, heartfelt, driving worship, and then also the, the word of God, because our feelings can't be trusted. And if the Holy Spirit is doing something in our heart, it's always going to line up with the word. And anytime I, get an, anytime I get an idea, it might not be a God idea. I need, to, I need to sift it through the word of God. And actually, the more you're in God's word, the more you understand the nature, the character of God, the more you are full of his spirit. And then your worship can flow from the time in his word. Without that, you're just going to be, you're just going to maybe, I don't even know, I, I want to be careful here, but just going to never, never land with your worship and just think it's all about feelings. And if I can feel the Holy Spirit, if I can just be loud enough, we can just turn up the amps. If we can just get the, move the crowd you know, you're going to miss it if you don't have that deep theological root. So anyway, man, I, I so appreciate your time and want to encourage people to uh, to subscribe to the Cooper Stuff podcast. A lot of great topics. And I appreciate your heart for that. And I don't know if you had any closing thoughts or, or are you good? Well, I sure lo- well, yeah, I sure love talking with you. It was really fun. Such great stuff. And I love that we're bridging the gap. I mean, I, I I would like to just end, well, maybe I'll end with one promotional thing, then end with, with, with a thought that I feel passionate yes. about. So yeah, follow me on Cooper stuff podcast. And uh, I am finishing a new book right now that, that I hope will be coming out um, top of the year. So, so follow me on that guys. If, if you would like to, one of the things I do feel most passionate about and, uh, and also uh, this is partially influenced certainly by Tozer certainly, but also from people like Michael Brown, as I, as we've mentioned only because he's our, our mutual connection, but a lot another of other controversial, people- another controversial figure, right? You're going to catch back to that. <laughs> very controversial. Yeah. Very controversial. The fact that him and James Brown are good, are, are friends is just hysterical. And I love it so much because I'm okay. great friends with both of them. But one of the things that Michael writes about in all of his books, I totally believe, mm-hmm. which is in the end, I mean, look, we have so much we can, as Christians, we can amen together. And a lot of that is going to be holiness. It's how, how do we live on the earth? And I believe that if we begin to live um, in this sort of moral, I would call a, a Christian, Holy Spirit, sanctified moral revolution, oh my gosh, that we're going to make a splash in America. Oh. That is, that is so big. I mean, all you have to do is be the only guy at your college not watching pornography. Boom. You've already yeah. made a huge inroad because everybody that you're around is living in slavery. You, they don't know yeah. they're living in slavery, but they are living in slavery. But you've been set free. All you got to do is be the only guy not practicing this and this and this. We all know all the stuff or the only girl. Mm -hmm. So I I look at that and I say, man, if we could join together and encourage one another, whether you like a kind of music or B kind of music, um, or whether you see the doctrines of grace, like a, or like B that's okay. We've got a job to do together for the glory of God. And I just encourage people, let the Holy spirit do a work of sanctification in your life so that we can shine brighter. That's, that's what I'm trying to do with my life. (laughs) Yeah. Well, you know, John, you, that's a great closing point because I've, I've expressed this in articles and sermons and, you know, our only hope for America right now is another spiritual awakening. In my opinion, you know, it's, we are so far gone that unless God awakens his church, awakens his, his people, but in studying revival, you find that it begins with one person on fire for God. And they, they light their family on fire, the community or their church. And if we can just get, you know, if my people humble themselves, not Hollywood, not Washington, not the Senate, if not the president, if my people humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Now, the context, of course, is Israel and Solomon, but the principle still applies, mm-hmm, you know, if absolutely. God's people humble themselves and pray. And so I just, I just want to add to that. It's, it's well said to, uh, to look in the mirror, own it, humble yourself, repent, repent is a very good word and uh, let God, you'll be amazed at what God uh, does with you. So anyway, it might be good to have you on again when the book is released, talk a little bit more about your testimony and things like that as well. So 
I'd love to. Thanks so much for having me, Shane. All right, everyone. Uh, closing out here of Idleman Unplugged, a special episode with uh, John Cooper from Skillet. Make sure you can find you can find Skillet on YouTube, or I don't know if you have a website uh, as well. John, Absolutely. Uh, yes, yeah, skillet.com, all the places on social media. A lot of times it's Skillet yeah. Music on Facebook and things like that. Right. My personal Instagram, John L. Cooper, John L. Cooper.com, et cetera. Awesome. All right, my friend. We'll talk, we'll talk again soon. Thanks, Shane. I really appreciate it. That was great fun, man. 